Thanks very much, Isabel, and hello, everybody. Great to see so many people here. It's many, many years since I first came to Faslane to protest the presence of nuclear missiles in the Gearloch. The Iona community, which I belong to, has since 1967 required its members as a condition of membership to actually to actively oppose the use or threatened use of nuclear weapons and to work for a policy of their renunciation by our nation and by every nation. Like thousands of organisations and millions of individual citizens across the world, we oppose nuclear weapons for many reasons. They're in contravention of international humanitarian law, and their very spirit is one of illegality, whatever government lawyers say. They're not a legitimate defence. Relying on nuclear weapons for deterrence means that you are prepared to use them on civilians with catastrophic humanitarian consequences. This is morally indefensible. They are just another facet of our complicity with death through our continuing and corrupt arms industry. Most recently in Yemen, They give a very clear message that power indeed does grow from the barrel of a gun. This is not a message for the future. Their cost is an obscenity. More than £200 billion pounds to replace the current system over its lifespan. Meanwhile, hundreds of thousands of people in the UK are forced to resort to food banks and hospitals and schools and housing all struggle against underfunding. Trident is capable of destroying most of the northern hemisphere in 10 minutes. 30 million people would be annihilated. Much of the earth would become uninhabitable. We will be failing our children and grandchildren if we don't make a stand against it. I say this with passion as part of the unrepresented and ignored gender in the business of war making. <clears throat> Women represent, on average, fewer than 10% of official negotiating delegations in peace talks and only 2.1% of signatories to peace agreements. That's 98% of the world's population excluded from something that affects so many women and so many children disproportionately. Our campaigning is not just against nuclear weapons. We are passionate for peace because we are passionate for life. Our protests are not simply gestures of dissent, but efforts to reach across where the borders are most agonized and most threatening. The presence of Trident, 40 miles from Scotland's biggest city, concentrates the mind wonderfully. Its deadly impact on the beautiful landscape of Scotland is intolerable. And we love our land. That love for land and people inspires in us a deep reverence and gratitude for life and moves us to action. The majority of Scots are consistently opposed to the renewal of Trident. But we don't just want nuclear weapons removed from Scotland and put somewhere else. We want them removed altogether from everywhere. That's why the adoption of the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons in 2017 by the majority of the world's countries was so encouraging, including those of us who live in states which actively oppose the treaty. It's a significant shift 
in the global discourse on nuclear weapons and a major challenge to arguments about the necessity of these weapons for security purposes. The award of the 2017 Nobel Peace Prize to the international campaign to abolish nuclear weapons is a further stirring affirmation of the overwhelming desire of ordinary people worldwide for a world free of nuclear weapons. It's, it's also a resounding challenge to the nuclear armed states such as our own. The Scottish ICANN partners, the Edinburgh Peace and Justice Centre, Scottish CND, Trident Plowshares, MEDACT, UN House Scotland are therefore especially grateful to the international guests who have come to Scotland to show their solidarity as we campaign in our country and in, to rid our country and all countries of nuclear weapons. All of you who have come are distinguished long-time activists, experts in your own area of peacework, and you represent millions more from a very diverse range of nations and contexts. We warmly welcome you to Scotland. We're honoured by your presence. We thank you for your solidarity. And in turn, we stand beside you in all that you do to achieve the abolition of nuclear weapons from the world. Individually, we are small. Together, our work has far-reaching consequences in the greater struggle to build justice, to make peace, and to protect the fabric of our beautiful, shared, fragile planet. So, everyone here, I invite you to give our guests a good Scottish welcome in whatever way you think is appropriate. And now uh, it's an honour and a privilege to introduce a woman who is a great Scot and a great internationalist, our national poet, the Scots maker, Jackie Kay. Hello, everybody. Hey. Hey. Welcome. Thank you. Um, it's really wonderful to be here um, on this extraordinarily sunny day. Um, my parents were very involved in the peace movement as I, as I have been all my life and being on this march today um, brought it all back. You know, what a wonderful thing it is to march, isn't it? What a wonderful thing it is to sing and to protest and to hear these songs again. My parents were both arrested in the protest in 1961 in Dunoon. In fact, they had so many people, they had too many, they had too many people for the, thank you, thank you, they had too many people for the jail, so they had to lock the remainder in the Catholic Church. So one of my parents got locked up in the jail, my dad, and my mum got locked up in the Catholic Church, uh, which just says quite a lot in all its various different ways and um, I'm the only one really in my family not to have been in prison in Dunoon because years later my brother was done for poaching so, um, so I'm quite staid really but I'd like to welcome all of our international guests as well and say thank you very very much to come, for coming it gives me it gladdens my heart to see all your faces here today and I've come to represent my parents and all the people like them who can't be here today for all their 
all their all sorts of different reasons that people can't be here today, whether they're housebound or whether they've got mobility problems or whether they haven't got anybody to bring them. I like to represent all the people that can't be here today because we are we are many out there. We are many here today, but we are many many out there. So let's remember all of those folk. Give them a wave. <laughs> So I thought I'd read for you um, three three poems. Um, so I thought if my mum and dad can't actually come, I'll bring them in poem form. And uh, so here they are in poem form. I was um, adopted in 1961, the year of the Danoon protests, the year that they were in prison. And uh, and before they had the before they were agreed as adoptive parents, they had to go through this rigmarole of a social worker's visit. So this is a poem in the voice of the adoptive mum who rushed round the house trying to hide all evidence of her politics. <laughs> Can everybody hear me? Yes. That's good. I thought I'd hid everything, but there wasn't a one giveaway sign left. I put Marx, Engels, Lenin, no Trotsky in the earring cupboard. Should not be checking out the towels, surely. All the copies of the Daily Worker I shoved under the sofa. The double piece I took down from the loo. A poster of Paul Robeson saying, give him his passport, I took down from the kitchen. I left a bust of Burns, my detective stories, and the complete works of Shelley. <laughs> she comes at 11.30 exactly. I pour her coffee from my new Hungarian set, and foolishly play she only ask its origins. Honestly, this baby is going to my head. She crosses her legs on the sofa, I fancy I hear the daily workers rustle underneath her. <laughs> well, she says, you have an interesting home. She sees my eyebrows rise. It's different, she qualifies. Hell, and I've spent all morning trying to look ordinary. <laughs> A lovely home for the baby. She buttons her coat all smiles. I'm thinking I'm on the home run. But just as she gets to the last post, her eye catches at the same time as mine a red ribbon with 20 world peace badges, clean as a hammer and sickle on the wall. Oh, she says, are you against nuclear weapons? To hell with this, baby or no baby. Yes, I said, yes, yes, yes. I'd like this baby to live in a nuclear free world. Oh, her eyes light up. I'm all for peace myself, she says, and sits down for another cup of coffee. Thank you. And this is a, quite a few years on from that. This, is, this little poem is called George Square. My 77-year-old, my, my dad's now 93, by the way, and my mum's 88. But this, in this poem, they're 77. My 77-year-old father put his reading glasses on to help my mother do the buttons on the back of her dress. What a pair the two of us are, my mother said. Me with my sore wrists, you with your bad eyes, your soft thumbs. And off they went, my two parents, to march against the war in Iraq. Him with his plastic hips, her with her arthritis to congregate at George Square, where the banners waved at each other like old friends flapping, where they'd met for so many marches over their years, for peace on earth, for pity's sake, for peace, for peace. Okay. And I'm going to nearly finished with one, uh, one last poem and then I'm going to finish all together with reading a, a letter that my mum wrote to the, to the Herald that some of you might have seen. Has anybody seen it? Yeah. So this, this poem's called April Sunshine and um, my parents both ended up in Glasgow Royal Infirmary uh, not that long ago at the same time and um, they couldn't actually visit each other. They were in different parts of the hospital so they wrote each other letters and a kind porter carried them back and forth. But when my mum got out after four months, I brought her a brand new, sartorially pleasing poppy red zimmer. And on her first trip out to the hairdressers, she said, she said, Jackie, you should have seen all the women crowding round me in the hairdressers. 
talk about Zimmer Envy. <laughs> Zimmer Rage, more like Zimmer Rage. So this is the last poem I'll read and then I'll read a very short letter and then I'll get off. April Sunshine. April Sunshine. And I wrote this originally as a song. When the people who've lived all their lives Sorry, I can't, I can't, I can't read my phone if you're making that much noise right behind me, sorry. Sorry. April Sunshine. When the people who've lived all their lives for democracy, for democracy, survive to see the spring, April Sunshine, it's a blessing, it's a blessing. In the hospital, this bleak midwinter, you were just an old woman, you were just an old man. Nobody imagined how you marched against Polaris, how you sat down at Dunoon, stood up for UCS. Nobody pictured you writing to Mandela or 50 other prisoners in South Africa. You were just an old woman. You were just an old man. Nobody knew how you greeted Madame Allende or sang the songs of Victor Hara or loved Big Arthur's bravura Bandiera Rosa or heard Paul Robeson at the May Day rally. You were just an old woman. You were just an old man. And how just last Saturday you were mad. You couldn't march against Trident with Nicholas Sturgeon. You say one less missile would subsidize the arts for a century. You say which politician will stand up for the refugees. You would have struggled there with your new grey stick. You would have walked with your poppy red zimmer. What do we want? You say, peace in society. Time has not made your politics dimmer. When the people who've lived all their lives for democracy, for democracy, survive to see the springtime, April sunshine, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. And I'm just going to finish, thank you very much, and I'm going to finish with reading this letter that my mum wrote uh, a couple of years ago to the Glasgow Herald. And I put it on Twitter the other day, and it's had the most extraordinary response. And it's been lovely for her, because she's had all these messages from people. So if anybody's out there on Twitter, do send us a message, because it's literally, it's literally seems to have dug her out of a trench and brought her back to life. She said, Jackie, that single tweet's brought me back to life. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a letter from her, um, uh, Helen Kay. As I write this, my 91-year-old husband is asleep. I'm 86 and in a wheelchair. We've been fighting for the ending of this monstrosity on the Holy Loch since the 1960s and been in jail, done that. We were fined £10 each, a week's wages then. The judge said, have you any family? Answer, yes, a young son. Who's taking care of him? His grandmother, who heartily agrees with us. As members of a peace committee, we raised the money to pay the fines through street collections and help from trade unions. We're still fighting all these years later. Wake up! Wake up, people! I beg you. P.S. They even confiscated my wee piece that I'd made for the sit-down protest. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. That was great. It's a wonderful day for poetry, uh, and it's a wonderful day for uh, for songs as well. And uh, we're now going to have uh, a song from uh, from Pauline Bradley, who's going to come and uh, sing for us now. Thank you. It's good to be here and apologies 
Jackie, I just had a wee panic about what I was, uh, how many songs I was meant to do. Anyway, I'm doing one song. As you know, um, the reason why we have these monstrous weapons is uh, so the big boys in the imperialist countries can stay on the uh, on the big table and carve up the world. Um, and it's uh, necessary for the capitalist system that that continues and so this is about the permanent arms industry uh, I'm hoping protest in harmony and the other singers can join in with this one it's called war machine In eastern skies, the great hawks fly over blooded hills where children die, and the instruments of tyranny were brought by Britain PLC as the war machine rolls round. And the war machine rolls round and round, and the poor and the weak get trampled to the ground. From where we stand, their cries are drowned. By the clink and clank of the dollar and the pound As the war machine rolls round And a prisoner sleeping where he fell Will awake to one more day of hell From a US baton steering pain His body bound by a British chain As the war machine rolls round And the war machine round and round and the poor and the weak get trampled to the ground and from where we stand their cries are drowned by the clink and clank of the dollar and the pound as the war machine rolls round it is time my friends for us to say we will not sell death to earn our pay it is time for arms exports to see live in peace as the war machine rolls round and the war machine rolls round and round and the poor and the weak get trampled to the ground and from where we stand their cries are drowned by the clink and clank of the dollar and the pound as the war machine rolls round and the war machine rolls round and round and the poor and the weak get trampled to the ground and from where we stand their cries are drowned by the clink and clank of the dollar and the pound as the war machine rolls round thank you very much thank you Many of these events, <coughs> many of these protests at Faz Lane, um, and this one in, in particular today, would not have been possible without the um, consistent and faithful uh, and ongoing work of Scottish CND. Uh, and congratulations to them for uh, getting this day together. <coughs> Uh, and, and so uh, I'm going to uh, invite now uh, Flavia Tudorano, um, who is the National Coordinator for CND Scotland, to come up and speak. Hi, everybody. I think I'm the first international <laughs> to be speaking today. I've had the pleasure to work with uh, Scottish CND and this um, um, inspirational organization for the past five years or more. I'm a citizen of two European countries. I'm Romanian as well as Scottish and I am extremely proud to be using my experience uh, and my cultural diversity to, to advance nuclear disarmament. Um, I come from Romania and I now found a home in this wet but very welcoming country, Scotland. Yay! And I am as hopeful um, 
and longing for a bright future for Scotland just as much as I mourn at Romania's bad decisions and cheer at its accomplishments. Uh, as you may know, Romania does not have nuclear weapons, but it's one of the most loyal European allies of US and NATO. While we don't have nuclear weapons, there is an American land-based land missile defense station in Romania, which is part of the European shield. And an accurate assumption would be that uh, Romanians' officials would probably vote with both hands up if we were asked to host nuclear weapons. There are many reasons why Romania's elected representatives and general public would support a majority such a move. Um, and if you start looking at the map, you'll see how close uh, the country is to both Russia and Middle East. And that, combined with a history of numerous failed or successful invasions of our country, um, as well as a fairly limited military capacity and not so many allies apart from the U.S., makes us want to be associated with more powerful countries and implicitly their nuclear weapons. This is the case for many countries like Romania. They want to connect themselves with nuclear weapons one way or another. And in my view, this is the first and most important step to challenge this, as we, we need to dismantle the idea that nuclear weapons are something that you want to be associated. No, the more stigma around these weapons, the better. These weapons are not something to be proud of, and the more this gets engraved into the public opinion and into the international discourse, the easier it becomes to make the argument of nuclear disarmament. In my work with Scottish CND, I came uh, uh, across to many people who said that I'm naive because I want nuclear disarmament and I don't care about the country's security. But that's the thing. Uh, Trident does not offer us any security. It, it's the opposite of it. it. It gives us a false sense of security while it puts us at risk. And Many of the areas of defense are being left depleted while lots of resources and money is put into Trident and it just gives us the sense that we're powerful but in fact we're very vulnerable. I think we need strong countries and reject nuclear weapons and we've seen so many states doing this by signing the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. 60 countries have already signed it and many ratified it. And we need to, to get uh, as many countries to voice their, um, their opinions. For Romania, it's difficult to advance such a cause, being under pressure geopolitically and historically, and therefore unable to drive meaningful change. So I'm turning to my other country, Scotland, hoping that we can truly by rejecting these weapons of mass destruction and tip the balance and how proud would I then be to call myself a citizen of such a country. Go Scotland! <laughs> Thank you Flavia for that word both from Scotland but also from Romania. And now we're going to hear uh, some words from Anthony from New York. Um, well, thank you. Okay. I was supposed to say something and I'll play so um, yes I'm from New York City and uh, we probably have a lot to do with funding what's right behind you right now and the whole nuclear weapon industry I just want to say I feel such a warm welcome here in Scotland uh, really uh, you are just tremendously and especially this group here I actually came to Scotland not to speak but to listen to you because I know well, I read Tim and Wallace's book, The Truth About the Trident, but then I met Janet Fenton at the UN, and you are one great, spirited, deeply courageous, wise, beautiful people, and a great community, and, and for so many decades you've been out here. I, I am so touched and moved by you, Scotland. So it's an honor for me to come and really listen and, and get some of your energy because as you know 
where I come from. Uh, well, you, yeah, you don't want to know where I come from. Um, so I have done a documentary, it's called uh, Good Thinking, Those Who Tried to Halt Nuclear Weapons. Did it a couple of years ago about mainly the people in the, in the United States uh, that have tried to push back on this. But uh, I took this a couple of years ago and I shopped it around one thing to our Congress and my senators. And one thing I have learned about the United States is, maybe you're learning it here, there isn't any democracy. When it comes to the nuclear weapon industry, there's absolutely no democracy in my country. It's not in the media. It is not covered. They don't talk about it. It's off. They just take the money they need. So that's something I found out. The other things I found out, I went to all the offices of those on our armed service committees and our appropriation committees in our Senate. And uh, what I learned is these people, our representatives there, know nothing about the cost of these weapons. You do. They had not really any idea how much this was costing us, taking away from health care and all our other needs, which you well know. They also knew nothing about what one detonation does. They hadn't thought about it. They hadn't taken time to think, really, what does one detonation do? Forget, you know, whether we're going to have war with Russia. What does one do? And you all here have, I don't have to tell you, I know everyone here knows exactly what one does. The other thing is they didn't know and they didn't seem to care about what was going around the world. This There was a humanitarian, uh, the impact of humanitarian of, of nuclear weapons. They knew nothing about this move, this long before the treaty was coming up. And I said, you really need to pay attention to the rest of the world. You know, they, they really, they don't want this anymore. And then a year or two later, this treaty was such a great gift to us. Everyone here is part of that treaty. So I just want to thank you. We have to be short, but it's an honor to be here. Uh, I have great hosts, uh, Janet Fenton and, and David McKenzie. Are, and uh, everywhere I've gone, uh, Brian from the uh, Peace and Justice, uh, just everyone here has been so beautiful and welcoming. And God bless you. Just know that I'm thinking about you. You can watch my documentary if you want. Little, It's very long. Watch it in little bits and pieces and give me feedback. But uh, please keep on knowing we're in this together very much from all over the world. I'm also very honored to be up here with everybody uh, that's come from around the world. And did you notice the speaker before me, Flavia? Did you notice she's gained a little weight? I don't But that, that's why we're here, right? That's, that is, Flavia, you, that, that's why we're here. That bringing children, our children and our grandchildren, our, that's why we're here today. So thank you all around the world. You're a great inspiration to me. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Um, before we uh, introduce the next uh, speaker, then uh, I have a couple of messages or, or call outs for Morag, uh, who is Jackie's driver. Morag, are you around? <laughs> Okay, uh, and also to Mika, uh, Mikhail and Rita, um, who I understand are providing food for our international guests, and Janet is reluctant to uh, uncover the food uh, without your go ahead. <laughs> so can you please uh, identify yourself? That'd be great. Thank you. So time for another song, um, and I think Adam should be is around somewhere. Adam Holmes, welcome to Adam. Hi everyone. I don't have uh, many protest songs. I'm not a protest song singer, but uh, I'm here to. Why not? Indeed, indeed. Pete Seeger said uh, a lullaby is a is a protest song to a baby. I like that a lot. I thought I could sing uh, two songs on the, the theme of, of death. I thought that might be nice for you. I'm very happy to be here and uh, I'm singing for, for my mother, Janet Fenton, uh, for you guys and, and for my baby, 
daughter, Rosa. Without a word, song signs, the red lines between the pages on the papers in the morning. Oh my God, oh my God, I'm gonna die when I get old. Now. Sent away to man the trenches. And bullets fly. I heard the cries. I awoke and started coming to her senses. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm gonna die when I get old. I'm not ready. Oh my God. Oh my God, I'm going to die when I get old. I'm not ready. Thanks very much. Uh, I'll play one more for you. This one has a, a very easy chorus. If you guys fancy to join me, that would be really nice.
Just as we are to me is loving you. Unpack my bags and lock my windows. Headed for the day. Save your airs and graces, baby. I am on my way. I am on. I am on my way. everyone cheers thanks Adam uh, another uh, practical announcement I have to let you know that there are uh, toilets at the uh, cemetery um, just uh, a walk up the hill from here uh, no a walk down the hill okay don't go up the hill <laughs> Um, I'm going to introduce uh, two of Scotland's best known uh, and uh, inveterate peace activists and campaigners known to many of us, um, including I think to the Scottish Prison Service. Um, I want to introduce Brian Quayle uh, and I want to introduce Janet Fenton. Uh, Janet Fenton uh, has been doing uh, an amazing job uh, and she told me on the phone earlier this week that she had dyed her hair purple so that she would be easier for people to see in a crowd <laughs> um, because lots of people are looking for her and uh, she, uh, sh she sustained an injury just at the beginning of today uh, so she's, she's, she's purple and red um, but always, always uh, welcome and, and lots to say. We're just here, we're not here as speakers, we're usually here, Brian and I have often been here together, very close together, very close. Very close. And so I'm really here to bring a message uh, because today is not a day for politicians, today is not a day for speech making by CND. Flavia was here as an international. I like to consider myself as a citizen of the world, but I've got a, a very important message uh, from uh, Plowshares, the Plowshares 7 at King's Bay, who were arrested for their action there, and which we commend very highly, especially us, don't we? And uh, the message that they've sent us is the Kings Bay Plowshares send greetings of love and gratitude to all of you here resisting Trident at Faz Lane. Your steadfast resistance over the years has been a beacon to us and we hope that we are the same to you. Indeed, the Trident and the relationship between the US and the UK governments is symptomatic of the insatiable quest to maintain global dominance. For the sake of the planet and her peoples, we seek to interrupt this deadly addiction. We seek to disarm and live. Blessings on your work and the people and the places it connects you with. 
Love from Liz, Steve, Mark, Martha, Claire, Patrick and Carmen. So I just think it's a wonderful message to have. <laughs> there are practicalities associated with putting on an event like this. And uh, I think Brian is going to explain what's required of you to ensure that we continue to have the resources needed for the practicalities of this kind of stuff. Uh, I'd like to say a couple of words first. First of all, we are here because we all know Trident is the worst thing in the world. It is the epitome of malevolence. At the start of the nuclear age, when Jackie Kay's parents were campaigning against them, a bomb was something you put in a plane, you opened the hatch and dropped it out and gravity took care of the rest. There's been incredible progress since then. We've gone from the old WE-177 free, free fall bombs, Polaris, Chevrolet, Trident, and now this Trident will be replaced every step forward we have opposed it without success now trident will be replaced by a newer and more deadly version we'll oppose that too and barring a revolutionary change in the political landscape of the uk we will fail again in spite of the july 7th last year treaty the death machine goes on and on. When we walk from the North Gate today, you may have noticed massive new extensions. This place is growing. Far from de-escalating, it's growing. They're not making any steps at all. Why do we fail time and time again? We fail because we want peace with half a mind and half a heart. Should I come to a demonstration if it's not raining? Or if, if there's not a match on, uh, I, might, I might come and see if I may have a visitor that day. That is why we feel we wage peace with half a mind and half a heart. But the wages of war is total. That's why they, we win and they lose. No, they lose. They win and we lose. <laughs> the waging of peace is at least as demanding as the waging of war. It demands at least as much courage and determination. Andrei Sakharov, the Russian Nobel Prize winning physicist and father of the Soviet H-bomb said, the struggle against nuclear weapons must take precedence over every human activity and interests. There are a whole range of forests of, prob of problems facing humanity. Climate change, De desertification, deforestation, oceans being cluttered up with plastic, and so on and so on and so on. T to tackle these things, we need two things. A change of heart, what they used to call repentance, metanoia. Stop doing the hellish thing we're doing, and time. Time. And this is the one thing that stands to rob us of time. Trident. Because while we're here, we're talking, there's a man sitting at a desk and a somebody under, deep under the sea ready to press the button and end it all. Trident promises not only unimaginable human car carnage but environmental destruction. This is the reversal of Genesis. This is the end, my friend. Not very cheerful news, but I've got a tendency to be to honest. Just stop them on yourself for a minute. If you open that, just stop, one last sentence, that's all. No, no, just, 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 just open up. That's all, yeah. Right, thanks. Sorry about that. What can we do about this nightmare? Two things. First of all, and most importantly, but importantly, was publicly scream no the hero's words we can only do this by the one means of joining cnd which is a sole organization dedicated 
to ending our rush to nuclear omnicide. I simply do not understand why in a country of some five million people, only a few thousand, give the issue the priority it desert demands and actually join CND. Can you really not afford a pound a month to say no to death and save the world? Secondly, here and now, you can show your love of life and hatred of Trident by putting your hand in your pocket and digging deep. And I don't want small change. I want you to give till it hurts. We up your love for the world. Save the world. Join us. Pee out now, please. Thanks, Brian. And while the buckets are going round, which I assume they are, um, I'm delighted to ask Penny Stone to come up and sing. Um, Penny is known to many people through protest in harmony and in her own right um, as someone who really uses song, not just to protest, but to, uh, to be persistent uh, and to be resistant and to affirm everything um, about about uh, about Scotland and about peace. Thank you, Penny. Perfect. Thank you very much. It's a delight to be described as persistent, for better and worse. Many thanks to Pauline for loan of the guitar here. Um, I, as lots of you know, I much prefer it when we sing together. Um, I'm just going to sing uh, a wee snippet of a song just now and, and I hope you'll join in with me in just a minute um, because as we all know, you know, the work that we do here protesting um, that we want to work towards dismantling these, these horrendous weapons um, behind you in front of me um, the other half of that work is building community, is building the kind of peaceful communities and, uh, that, that we want to live in so this is a song, it's an old um, peace song from Azerbaijan and it's been translated into lots of different languages and I'm just going to sing a verse in Arabic because I think for us in the West at the moment it's really important, that's, that's one of the biggest bridges that we need to build and sustain at the moment or oh, I've just spotted some ABBA people and um, I'm not going to sing any ABBA, you'll have to wait till later for that I didn't, I forgot my outfit and, um, and, and so this is a song extending the hand of, of friendship um, that I'm just going to sing a verse in Arabic and then I'm just going to daidle it and I hope that you will join in on whatever nonsense sounds come out for you because actually we don't need words to make music together we can just, we can just sing along but I'll just sing the Arabic line um, before we start Africa <laughs> community building works, you drown me out. <laughs> middle's too high, sing a different note. That's how you do it, that's how you find harmonies. I was pretty 
pretty good for a song that you don't know. That was pretty good. We're going to do a song that you do know now. We're going to sing down by the riverside, but we're going to sing down by the Clyde side. Yes. And the reason that we're going to sing that is because it's the song that was brought over from America. It was brought over with the soldiers and it was passed over by the peace protesters as well. Um, so in the early 1960s, the Glasgow Eskimos that were protesting, that were out in wee kayaks up against the great big man of war and the Holy Lock trying to stop them coming up, trying to stop these nuclear weapons, were singing one of the songs that they sang. We're going to sing um, Lay Down Your Sword and Shield down by the Clyde side. We're going to sing Blockade Those Submarines. Oh, it's just an idea. Blockade those submarines. Just an idea. Blockade those submarines. Just a little, just a little thought there. Down by the Clyde side, and we're gonna sing. We're gonna ban the bomb forever. Here, there, and everywhere, because we are closer than we have ever been. So sing it for yourselves, but sing it for all the people that aren't here. Sing it for all of the people that have given to this struggle that aren't with us today, either because they couldn't get here or because they're no longer with us. I'm gonna sing it for Anne Scott. I'm going to sing it for Helen Stephen. I'm going to sing it for my mum, Sue Stone, who brought me here as a teenager and said, I need you to see this. I need you to see what we have done and what we keep doing and got, got me started saying no to this. So sing it for those people that aren't here. Sing it for yourselves and sing it for the kids so that they don't have to come out here and risk the rain. Gonna lay down my sword and shield down by the Clyde side, down by the Clyde side, down by the Clyde side, gonna lay down my sword and shield, down by the Clyde side, I ain't gonna study war no more. the better gonna blockade those submarines just an idea down by the Clyde side down by the Clyde side down by the Clyde side gonna blockade those submarines down by the Clyde side I ain't gonna study one no more I ain't gonna study one no more forever. Oh yes we are. Gonna ban the bomb forever. Here, there and everywhere. Here, there and everywhere. Here, there and everywhere. Gonna ban the bomb forever. Here, there and everywhere. We ain't gonna study war. No, let's try on we. We ain't gonna study war no more. 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 Thank you very much. Beautiful, beautiful singing. Thank you, Penny. Um, I think uh, Brian invited you all to donate and put money in the buckets, but you can't do that till the buckets start going round. So the buckets are here. Would four people like to come out and take the buckets and start having them going round? Are you okay? Okay, that's fine. I have no idea. Okay, I ask, I ask this lady. If 
Thanks, Penny. Everyone is obviously in great voice today. Um, we're going to hear a voice from uh, uh, another place in Europe, um, a place uh, also considerably in our news at the moment. Um, and we're going to welcome... We're going to welcome Professor um, Katarina Michal... Michal... Uh, Mikhail Yankov. I'll ask her to say that again because she will say it with more confidence than me. Um, but she is Professor of International Relations at the Ural Federa Federal University. Um, and she teaches in contemporary issues of international relations and international security. Um, I think her voice and her presence here is a great one to have. Um, and her words um, will be very important for us to hear. So thank you. Hello, everybody. So what can I say? You are so amazing. I'm from Russia, and I don't believe it, it could be here. So you are so inspiring. And I would like to, uh, to repeat the words of Scottish CNN. In then Scotland can be known for its contribution to international peace and justice rather than being a launcher pad for vegan war. I hope that soon, very soon, we can use this slogan for Russians. I hope so. Thank you. Thank you for you. It's, it's great. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we'll just keep going. Are you Tim and Vicky? Okay, welcome. Uh, After these encouraging words from Russia, we, also, we would like now to welcome from the United States um, Tim Wallace and Vicky El Ellis. Vicky Elson, um, Tim is the National Coordinator of Nuclear Ban US uh, and was a delegate to the negotiations from the UK when he was working with UK Quaker Peace and Service. Uh, so uh, I'll inv invite them to come up now um, because they have been working engaging communities uh, in the United States with the, with the treaty. Um, and to shift the, the, the tide in favour of nuclear abolition. Thank you. So there's, there's lots of bad news here today and we see it all across the way there. And there's also lots of good news. And we're here to tell you some more good news. In the United States, we have lots of uh, we're up against some you know Trump and others but individuals and faith communities and um, businesses and cities and now states are coming out in support of the treaty so that's very exciting I don't know how many people here have heard the news of California it's the largest state in the United States and just a couple of weeks ago, they voted in their Senate and their Congress to support the treaty by a vast majority. The whole state of California. <clears throat> and for those who may think California is, you know, kind of weird anyway, the conference of right. U.S. Conference of Mayors, which I think represents all the major cities in the United States, more than a thousand of them, voted unanimously to support the treaty at their meeting. But we're not just asking for people to support the treaty, we want them to do something. And we're trying to encourage, uh, as, just as when Trump decided to pull the US out of the Paris Climate Accords, all these governors and um, churches and um, uh, colleges came out and said, we're gonna, we're gonna comply with the Paris Climate Accords, whether or not the US uh, fulfills their commitments. We're saying the same thing about the Ban Treaty. We can do things our own 
in our own cities, in our own states, in our own faith communities, and we can get people to comply with this treaty as best they can by refusing to have anything to do with these companies that are making these weapons. Yes. So we're going to give you a little flavor of our campaign in the U.S. by uh, poetry. Okay, this is your part. You ready? The whole world is signing a treaty to say nuclear weapons are going away. Want to try it? The whole, the whole world, world is signing a treaty, a treaty to, to say, say nuclear, nuclear weapons, weapons are, are going, going away. away. They're an accident waiting to happen. World War III waiting to start. They're stupid, expensive, and dangerous, so we're taking them all apart. The whole, the whole world, world is signing a treaty to say nuclear weapons, weapons are going away. They can't make us safer. That's not what they're for. Nobody wins in a nuclear war. They don't make us safe. That's a lie we've been told that makes some people rich and a lot of us dead. The, the whole, whole world, world is signing a treaty to say nuclear weapons, weapons are going away. away. We're eliminating nuclear weapons before they eliminate us. That's why we flew over the pond and came to Faz Lane on a bus. The whole world is signing a treaty to say nuclear weapons are going away. We live in a very strange country. We started this nuclear trend. With the treaty, divestment, and boycotts, we're happy we're nearing the end. The whole world is signing a treaty to say nuclear weapons are going away. California, which, by the way, is the world's fifth largest economy, just past the UK, sorry guys. California is supporting the treaty. Presbyterians, Quakers are stars. The whole US Conference of Mayors and three members of Congress so far. The, the whole world is signing a treaty to say nuclear weapons are going away. Tacoma Park, Berkeley and Ojai, Northampton, Los Angeles too. Next, Minnesota, Chicago, New York will be joining the queue. The whole world is signing a treaty to say nuclear weapons are going away. Okay, this is for you who are here today. Winners with all of us of the Nobel Peace Prize. On days when campaigning is hard and you feel discouraged and shitty, remember, we love you so much and so does the Nobel Committee. Yeah. The whole world is signing a treaty to say nuclear weapons are going away. Scotland, you're key to the treaty. You're leading the rest of UK. Be bold, don't take no for an answer. We're with you. Nay nukes, nay nay nay. Last time, the whole world is signing a treaty to say Nuclear, Nuclear weapons, weapons are, are going, going away. away! Nay nukes! Nay, nay, nay! Yay! Thank you, Tim and Vicky. And, and these are great Scottish accents you've yeah, got. Thank you. Another song now, um, you look as if you're all still there, ready to uh, join in maybe. Um, we're going to uh, have a song now from uh, another well-known uh, piece, uh, musician from Willie Sinclair from Irvine. Thank you.
been reminded um, of the um, affirmation of the state of California um, for the for the nuclear treaty um, this is this is such a change such a shift um, in the, the discourse around nuclear weapons um, and uh, we're very happy uh, to be able to welcome uh, Rebecca Johnson. Rebecca is uh, one of the UK's best known peace activists and campaigners and lobbyists um, and uh, she's here. <laughs> uh, welcome Rebecca uh, and uh, welcome as well to the people that you're going to bring with you. Thank you very much and I, can Alison from ICANN in the US, you know ICANN is 500 uh, organizations from 100 countries. So we're inviting some to come up with us. So we're Alison, please can we have Micah, Sharon, Tanil, Sebastian from uh, Israel, from uh, Netherlands. Just a tiny uh, example. We, but all of you, all of you, made this Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons possible. And all of you are Nobel Peace Prize winners. We have brought this to this amazing rally here at Fazrain. To make this very clear, it is not possible to get to a treaty with just one person. So the Nobel Peace Prize is about all of the people who worked so hard to get this treaty and who need to continue to give us hope and some more resources and perhaps a, a bigger megaphone, bigger microphone to get the job done. So let me tell you very quickly before I hand on to others to speak. So this treaty, the nuclear ban treaty, this prohibits the threat the use of threat of nuclear weapons and all those activities like deployment, testing, the stationing, really? the stationing of the uh, nuclear weapons, the Trident and all those other nuclear weapons in the nine nuclear armed countries, all of those activities that would make it possible for any country to acquire, to produce, to have and potentially to use nuclear weapons. These are prohibited. It requires the total elimination of nuclear weapons and provides two pathways by which countries like the UK and Israel, the US, Russia, all of them, I am wearing a scarf from Women Cross the Demilitarized Zone between North and South Korea because they want but North and South Korea and Japan and the US and China to join this treaty because they see that as the only sustainable way to denuclearize to eliminate the nuclear weapons from that region. So for all over the world, there are the pathways to join. 
and it has a humanitarian preamble that is the most beautiful preamble about the kind of human beings we want to be and the kind of humanity we can be. And I'm going to hand over now to Alison to talk a little bit more about that. Hello, Scotland! So my name is Alison, and I work in New York with the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. And I imagine there are a lot of Wilfers out there. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, though, WILF is a 103-year-old women's peace organization started in 1915. And women have been at the forefront of the anti-nuclear movement since its inception. And what a lot of people don't know about the Nuclear Weapon Ban Treaty is that it is groundbreaking in this regard. It includes provisions on women's participation in disarmament and takes note of the disproportionate impact of nuclear weapons use and testing on women and men. And if you want to learn more about that, we're having an event tomorrow night on feminism and the bomb. And I know that Wilt UK is also organizing a seminar on this later in the fall. But I also wanted to say that I live and work in New York and spend the majority of my time in windowless conference rooms. And so when Janet uh, invited me to come out here, it was an immediate yes in my mind. Because for years I've been hearing about the really awesome activism that you're doing here in Scotland, and I want to come and see it firsthand. And it's been so impressive, and so heartwarming, and so inspiring. And I just want to say, please keep it up. Everything that you've been doing with the convoys, with the legislation, with the protests here, it's seen around the world. Other activists know about it, and it's heard in the UN and in New York too. So please, don't stop what you're doing, and keep going. And now we'd like to introduce Maika, who's come all the way from the Netherlands to talk about some of the amazing things they're doing and that they need your help and our help to do. Thanks, Rebecca. So my name is Maika, I'm from the Netherlands, uh, as is Sebastian, who's on the far side there. Uh, and we're here really in solidarity uh, with the people of Scotland. We're in a very similar position where a large majority of the Dutch population does not want the nuclear weapons that are stationed in our country to be there. Uh, they want our country to sign the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, but the government is not necessarily listening and is keeping the nuclear weapons there. So we can feel very solidary, uh, in solidarity with you uh, here today, and we're really happy to be able to support uh, your campaign. So PAX is part of ICANN, uh, and together with ICANN we lead the divestment campaign Don't Bank on the Bomb. And there are some amazing Scottish Don't Bank on the Bomb protesters uh, as well here today. You may have seen the really great banner. Yay! <laughs> so, uh, as part of this campaign, um, we list the private companies that still produce nuclear weapons, including British companies that, make it, that are involved in the, in the maintenance of Trident. Um, and we are asking all banks and pension funds, maybe including your own pension funds or your own insurance company, uh, to stop investing in those companies. Um, and thereby to put pressure and to stop the production of nuclear weapons. And actually, investing in nuclear weapon producers is also prohibited under the new TPNW, so the new Prohibition Treaty. Um, and it's a really great way that we can uh, also put pressure on the nuclear weapons uh, states that have not joined the treaty yet. Uh, because you can use your money, you can move your money, uh, and they will listen to that. Companies will listen when you use your economic force uh, and your money. So. There's a really great campaign starting up in Scotland, uh, including a call for the Scottish National Parliament to divest its fronts from nuclear weapons. Um, and there's some really great people out here, so get involved with them. Thanks. So don't bank on the bomb, and don't let anyone you know give money, bank on nuclear weapons. And now I'd like to turn to Sharon, who's from one of the nine nuclear armed states, Israel and was one of the first campaigners also to be joining the team with ICANN. And she's going to talk about the initiatives that they're doing in that country where you're not even supposed to talk about it. Thank you, Rebecca. Hi, everybody. Uh, first, uh, yeah, I'm from the Israeli disarmament movement, a huge fan of the Scottish campaign. Some of you might know, but I guess the majority not, that the Scottish campaign is the biggest supporter and the Scottish campaign has adopted the Israeli disarmament movement and our work towards the weapons of mass destruction free zone in the Middle East, which we are about to achieve right after you resume your yes campaign and get these weapons out of here. 
I had a meeting with those people I, I very immaturely call the baddies in Israel. They invited me to get to know me better. And one of the first things they said was, don't you realize Israel will be the last to get rid of its nuclear weapons? And I said, no, that's France. So guys, we already know who's the last state, but we already know who's the first state, and that's the UK, and that's thanks to you. Finish with it fast. Come and help us over. Good luck. So from all of us, from those ban the bomb marches, we've banned the bomb. Now sign the treaty. From Faslane 365 to the treaty. And now we have to make it implemented. Thank you so much for all of your work. Thank you for what you're going to do to make this happen, for this great welcome. And we hope to be campaigning with you until we eliminate all the nuclear weapons from all of our countries. Thank you. Oh, and thank you also, singers, for those great songs about ICANN. We're going to have another song now, I think we're ready for another song, and uh, Sylvia McGowan is going to come and sing for us. Welcome, Sylvia. Hi. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try a song. Um, I've never sung it before. I've got a backup here. hope I don't need it. Um, I was determined to sing this song. It was written by a good pal of mine, Corrine Fulwart, and she wrote it for occasions like this. Um, so, and it's called... I can't remember the title. Yeah, Better Things. Can we have our first aider up behind the stage, please? First aider. Doesn't need it. Okay, uh, Better Things. Ten thousand years of big ideas It told into a billion fears A shiny bone, a shiny rocket A bullet in a bully's pocket So mesmerised by particles We disregard the articles The ones we wrote to keep the peace Sullied now in blood and greed and grease is this the best that we can do? Oh, I can think of better things, can't you? With a devil's pitchfork in our hand, we turn the fields of foreign land. We mine the deals, we dig the deeper, we view the serpent from his keeper. But these are the hands that fix the bones, the ones that build with sticks and stones. These are the hands that plant the tree, the ones that pull a newborn baby free. Is this the best that we can do? Oh, I can think of better things, can't you? I can think of better things that hands can make and hearts can sing. If these are the best that we can do, oh, I can think of better things, can't you? We may lament the deadly art of tiny atoms torn apart, visions that we can't return, and future fires in which we fear we'll burn. But this is the art of those before, the ones that found between the cure. This is the art of follow the cure, the ones that find the cure within the core. The noble mind behind the rays that eased our earthly cares away. Is this the best that we can do? Oh, I can think of better things, can't you? For these are the hands that fix the bones, the ones that build with sticks and stones. These are the hands that plant the tree, the ones that pull a newborn baby free. 
Is this the best that we can do? Oh, I can think of better things, can't you? I can think of better things that hands can make and hearts can sing and hearts can sing and hearts can sing The wonderful song. We're going to hear now from someone who comes from a country that uniquely in the world knows the real horror of nuclear weapons. Um, and I'm very pleased to welcome Shigeo Koyabashi from Japan. I am Shigeo Kobayashi, live in Essex, so not really Japanese living person at the moment. However, Japan, as she just mentioned, is in a very unique position to have had Nagasaki and Hiroshima bombing. And also, 2011, we had a very big nuclear power plant accident, Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Now, both combined, Japan is the worst devastated, worst affected by radiation and a lot of deaths of the people. Still, there is some good news in the neighborhood country, Korea. Just very recently, President Kim and also Moon both leaders met up and started talk, which never happened so many years. They were at war, but they are at last opening their mind to create peaceful Korea. And they even talk about inviting Olympic Games 2032 jointly. I hope it will go through. This is a very good news for Japan too. However, worst news I heard just this week was the current Prime Minister Shinzo Abe in Japan again elected to be the leader of the controlling party Jiminto, Liberal Democratic Party. He already served for six years two times, he made it happen that the uh, current Prime Minister can have third term. He made it his own law and he is selected again for another three years. This is a very, very bad news from Japan because Shinzo Abe, when he stood at the peace ceremony in Hiroshima, and Nagasaki, both mayors made it very clear it's such a rare occasion that treaty to prohibit nuclear weapons. At last it's happening. What Shinzo Abe is saying is he doesn't mention at all this new attempt in the UN. He just says we approach multilateral peace which means weapon-holding countries and non-weapon-holding countries have to come together, which never happened and never going to happen. So, in that sense, I believe Shinzo Abe become more and more like a poodle of the Trump, which is very, very sad news for me too. Now, recently I had a chance to read the story Black Rain, Kroi Ame in Japanese, written by Ibuse Masuji. And the English edition is written by 
John Vesta Brackley. And because there is a reason I started to read this book again, is that how many people still remember what really happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki? How many people had to die in such really bad way? Or some people just burned to the charcoal condition or just left the shadow on the bridge and so on. Now, I came to in, in touch with um, pacifist and the actor and the playwright gentleman called Michael Mears. He is on the national tour today, or last week and so on. One man play he is performing, concentrating and conscientious objector. What, how many people, what the conscientious objector suffered from since first World War time. This country made it law to allow conscientious objection to the war. But when conscientious objectors appeared or came to say, I am a conscientious objector, they started interrogate, they started to ask all nasty questions, and some people had to give in and say, all right, what the hell, I'll go to the military service. And that sort of attitude, still, majority people have in this country too. People like you gathered here today are different. You are the future. You are the peacemaker. And you are the civilian's power. And that's what we have to have more and more to create nuclear-free world and nuclear-free society. Right, so I would say, along with nuclear weapons, we have a nuclear power issue in this country and in Japan and in Korea, everywhere, they have a nuclear power. And the nuclear power doesn't coexist with our being, our existence. So along with the nuclear weapons, nuclear powers, we have to object. So it's a fight, all right. <laughs> We are the peacemakers. We believe in peace. We are peace, peace, peace. Thank you. We're coming near to the end of our program now, but we still have some special treats in store for you. Um, and one of them is a song from Eileen Penman. God, that's a terrible view, that barbed wire, and to know what's going on behind that fence, it's really abominable and scary and horrible. I fear for my grandchildren, so I do. Anyway, I'm going to sing a song. Um, oh. I'm going to sing a song. Um, I wrote it a couple of years ago for an Edinburgh project called Radical Voices, which we meet every couple of months or so. 
um, and sing radical songs, but I've rewritten it really for today. And I'm sorry, I've got my wee machine here because I keep changing the words. <laughs> so it's called um, Nemer Nukes. So you, there's a wee bit in the chorus where you can sing Nemer Nukes and Nemer War. Pa Elton Ben. Oh, get to the beginning. So Nemer Nukes. Come on, everybody, lend a hand. Raise your voices all over the land. Uh, not in our name, not in our town. No, 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 we won't back down. No, 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 we won't back down. Sisters and brothers, we know what to do. Stand together to see it through. We know what we've come here for. Name air nukes and name air war. Name air nukes and name air war. Politicians, you lost the plot. You just abused the power you got. No love in your heart, no common sense. War only makes more violence. War only makes more violence. Sisters, brothers, you know what to do. Stand together to see it through. We know what we've come here for. Name air nukes and name air war. Name air nukes and name air war. I've lost, no, I've not finished yet. I've not finished. <laughs> I've got the wrong songs come up now. <laughs> oh, Eileen. Anyway, it's killing and bloodshed far away because of the bombs you'll sell today. Making speeches, making war. We all say no more, no more. We all say no more, no more. Sisters, brothers, you know what to do. Stand together to see it through. We know what we've come here for. Name air nukes and name air war. Name air nukes and name air war. Making speeches, making war. We all say no more, no more. Name air nukes and name air war. Let's see your name air nukes and name air war. Name air nukes and name air war. Name air nukes and name air war. We're going to hear from one more speaker and then we have uh, uh, a couple of musical items, uh, one of which is really indescribable. Um, and so I think you should definitely hang on for that. Um, and uh, before that, uh, David is going to make an announcement about the buses for all of you who are worried about that. Thank you. I'm not really a speaker, I'm just a public service announcement. In case you were in any doubt, the buses will be lined up up yonder and see one of them's almost away already. And when we finish in a couple of two or three minutes, just make your way up there and get on your own bus. And if you need to summon your bus and it hasn't appeared yet through your bus steward, do it now. OK, thanks. Thank you. I want to introduce our last speaker, last but not least, um, and I... Uh, well, I'm very glad to welcome from Berlin, Rainer Braun, who is the co-president of the International Peace Bureau, which uh, is one of Europe's oldest, perhaps the oldest, peace organizations. Um, so, uh, Rainer. Dear friends, in peace and resistance, and I think when I'm staying here in Fast Lane, I should underline the word resistance. And what the world and Europe can learn from you is how long and intensively you have to fight. Your peace camp and your actions against these military bases are the world's longest actions against military bases. And I think you're quite proud of that, that you are staying here again and again fighting against these places of death and war. 
So you not only brought to the peace movement in the world this resistance, never forget that you also brought the idea of the Easter marches to the peace movement in the world. So many of the actions where other peace movements were learning from you are coming from your country. And I can tell you, we learn from Fast Lane in Germany, our actions against the nuclear, US nuclear weapons in Germany now are 100 days per year in front of the military bases. We are blocking the base of the civil obedience every year, 100 days, and we learn this from you. You know, what we need, what we need is the power you have. But what we also need is the enlargement of our protest, of a protest of the whole society. And this is the big job we have to do. And all of us know that this is not easy. But we have to go to the trade unions, to the environmental group, to the developing groups, to the many people that are not satisfied with their situation and tell them when you are not satisfied with your situation, you have to go on the streets. But never forget, the most important thing that we need is peace. And without peace, nothing is anything. We need peace as a background from survival. So we have to fight for all the unsatisfied people that we are going with us on the street and fighting for peace. And let me say how urgent this is. You know the figures like me. The NATO is spending one trillion dollars per year for military purposes. You know your school system. You know your university system. Your healthcare system. We need this money and all people in your country and the world need this money for social and ecological developments. So, let us fight against nuclear weapons. Let us fight for disarmament. Let us convince much more people to join us. And let us do this together in every country and together worldwide. Let us come back to the 50th of February 2003, where 50 million people all over the world were protesting against the legal Iraq war. This is what we want to have again. And let us start this and then see what we can do the next years. We will be successful because we have to be successful for us and for the surviving of our and the next generation. Thank you. Okay, uh, someone has found a fit bit at the cafe. If anyone has lost one of these, that's where it is. Um, and now um, I would like to welcome onto the stage uh, Scotland's most unusually named peace group, the Gerloch Horticulturalists. <laughs> Yeah. 
if you think you know, you can let them go. If you're hanging on to your nuclear bombs, Britain, you're not free. There's a chance for peace. If you lose the nuclear bombs, then you set us free. Now the UN treaty signed, there's a choice for peace. Now the bombs be banned, we just need to ratify, let us all be free. Make a choice for peace, gotta do your very best, cause you know it's time. You know it's best if you ratify. Make a choice for peace, that's all we ask of you. Make a choice for peace. Make a choice, 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 make a choice for peace! such glamorous performers. I'm here just to say thanks. Thanks to Kathy. Uh, thanks to all our wonderful speakers.